Welcome to another Blueprint IoT video and today we will take a look on how to connect Grafana with a database. So right after you log in, you find this page here where you can hit launch Grafana. After the actual Grafana application opened in a separate tab, you can navigate to the burger menu and go to connections where you can connect a data source. So in our case, you want to connect a SQL database, a SQL database, to be even more precise, a Postgres database. So we will go ahead and search for Postgres. So right here, Postgres SQL pops up and we can just hit it and start right away with filling in our data for our database. So first of all, we have to give it a name. So we go for Blueprint IoT database. Next is the IP address where your database is hosted. So I will cover this up for you. Once you enter the IP address, you actually have to make sure to enter the port as well. So Grafana can access your host on the right port. You do this by entering your IP address, colon, and then the port number, which is in my case, 5432. But of course it can differ in your case, but it's a quite common port for a database, especially a Postgres database. Afterwards, we have to enter the actual name of the database, which you have defined on your server. And you have to choose a user and a password to log into your database. So the credentials you have predefined on your database site already. Since I configured this user already, Grafana just pulls the credentials right away and I don't have to enter something once more. Next is the SSL mode. So you can disable it or you can activate the verification. But to do so, of course, you need an SSL certificate, which I don't have activated for my server since it's just for testing. But of course, it's recommended to get a SSL certificate to have this extra layer of security. Further down, you can set connection limits, which we will skip. And you can set some details for the Postgres SQL database, for example, the version you're running or the timescale database, which is a specialized version of the Postgres SQL database for time related data, which is quite often the case if we talk about sensor data, measurements, something like this. A lot of the IoT stuff is actually time related. So it's nice to have this extension available, but you don't have to use it. And in my case, I also haven't used it. It's just to make, give you a bit more comfort, but you can still do all your applications without this timescale extension activated. You can also set a minimum time interval, which is recommended to be set accordingly to your data writing cycle. So we could skip this, but in our case, we write the data once a minute, so we can type it on once per minute. So that's basically all here to set up the data source. So we hit save and test. And we just received an error message that this database is not existing. And I just double checked and I actually missed here a spelling. So in my case, the actual name of the database is DHBWDB and I just missed the DB. So let's give it a try again. And here we go, data source updated, database connection okay. So we're ready to go. So after we configured our data source, it's time to set up our first dashboard. To do so, we go back to the burger menu, hit dashboards and go right away for creating a new one, new dashboard, and here we go. We can already see our canvas for our dashboard. So this will be our dashboard later on. But of course, there's nothing there because we have to configure some panels. So each chart or graphical element will be a panel and you can add several data streams within one panel. Or of course, you can have one data stream per panel. But let's go ahead with the first panel. So we hit add panel. So here we are, it looks a bit complicated, but I will walk you through every element. First of all, we have to choose our data source. So we can just use this drop down menu and search for the Blueprint IoT database, which is the first one here. So we select this one. Down here at the bottom, we can set our SQL query to actually acquire our data from the database. But before we go ahead with this, let's check out the menus on the top. In the upper right corner, we can actually select time series, bar chart, or whatever kind of interface you want. So time series is a classic chart based on time readings. But of course, it could be nice to have all those other options, maybe a gorge to display the actual current value or whatever chart fits your needs of your data. So we will stick with time series as a chart and go down to the data. So first of all, we have to select the table we want to acquire the data from. And you can see right away that Grafana already scanned the whole database for all the tables that are available. And you can just select by type as you go the table you need. 
So I will go ahead with team one. And now I have to choose the column which gets a bit complicated. So first I will choose the value number one, which is just one of many columns in my database. But of course this value needs to be time related. So I have to add another column, which will be the timestamp because the timestamp is just one column in my database. Since this data is time related, I have to change the format from table to time series. And what we can do now and only now after we change to time series, we can give the columns an alias. So our value will function as the value and our timestamp will function as the time. Quite a neat feature by the way is that you can preview the actual SQL query down here. So value number one is acquired as the value and timestamp is acquired as the time. And this is acquired from team number one and we have a limit of 50 data points. So let's give this query a try. And it's actually not working even though I know there is data in the last seven days. So this problem is probably related to the structure of my database that I just introduced a timestamp as a normal value in a database and I haven't set it up as a time series database. But there's a super simple way to overcome this problem. We just have to order our data. So we turn on the order switch and we choose according to which data it should be ordered, in our case the timestamp. Then we choose the scanning because we want to have the latest data at the top and we will just increase the limit to 1000. You can choose whatever you want. Let's hit run query again. And there we go. We can actually see data points which are all at value 11, no matter what was the time. That's actually true. So we are basically done. We configured our data source. We fed in all the information for our first chart and we can already hit apply. And here we go. We have the first chart in our dashboard. And of course we could add much more stuff here. And we could also fine tune this a lot to fit in the right time frame and add many more visualizations. So if you're interested how to build an extensive Grafana dashboard, make sure to be subscribed for our next videos about Grafana and databases and everything else around IoT. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and see you next time.